Hey there and welcome back to NBA 2K18's My League Mode. My name is Pete and today we complete the Eastern Conference semi-finals in our NBA 2K18 My League Expansion Team series. The Louisville Legionnaires have successfully advanced into the Eastern Conference semi-finals after beating the New York Knicks in 5 games and they are now going up against the Charlotte Hornets who advanced against the 76ers. In the regular season, the Legionnaires' record against the Hornets was 2-1, the Legionnaires won two of the three matchups by double digits and lost the third one by seven. And in all three games, Kemba Walker was the Hornets' best scorer. Now, this 2-1 record might lead us to believe that the Legionnaires match up quite well against the Hornets. And to be honest, after the performance against the Knicks, I am pretty confident going into the series. However, we should not forget that as the 7th seed, the Hornets actually beat the 2nd seed 76ers in only 6 games, so I think we shouldn't take this matchup lightly. Out in the Western Conference, we can already see a good example of what can happen. Here we have the exact same situation in the matchup Golden State Warriors vs Utah Jazz. The Jazz advanced as the 7th seed over the 2nd seed, and they have continued their success, stealing Game 1 from the Warriors. That is something that we of course want to avoid, so before we jump into the games, let's quickly talk strategy and matchups. And we'll start things off with the Hornets franchise player at the point guard, Kemba Walker. I think it is safe to say that Kemba Walker is the man to beat in this series. Not only will he be orchestrating the Hornets offense, but he will also be their primary scoring option and a very versatile one at that. And in that role he unfortunately has a pretty nice mismatch against our starting point guard, Tyler Eulis. Eulis is not really known as a great perimeter defender and chances are high that Walker will try to abuse that throughout this entire series. Standing at 6 foot 2 tall, Walker also has the height advantage over the 5'10 Eulis, and for those reasons I am a bit worried about this matchup. If things really don't work out, we maybe have to give a more prominent role to Rajon Rondo, or we'll have to work one of our shooting guards into the point guard rotation. Continuing down the roster in Charlotte, the next key player is Malik Monk at the shooting guard. And shooting, that is what Malik Monk does really really well. He is currently leading the league in 3 point percentage, shooting 50% from deep on roughly 5.5 attempts per game. However, I am still a bit more comfortable with this matchup, knowing that we can trust in the length and defensive abilities of Josh Richardson. Not only is Richardson 3 inches taller than Monk, but the Legionnaire's leading scorer will very likely also give Monk a lot to do on the defensive end, which could very well lead to early foul trouble. Defense will then be even more of an issue for Monk's backup Jeremy Lamb, who is really not a great perimeter defender at all. So if he has to defend Richardson, that is going to be one hell of a mismatch, and I think the same could be true against Andre Flanders, who is also a very good scorer off the dribble. At the small forward then, the Hornets do have a bit of defense, Michael Kidd Gilchrist is a very good perimeter defender, and Nicola Batum isn't too shabby either. This could cause some trouble for our starting small forward Rodney Hood, who also for a change can't really make use of his height in these matchups. On the other hand, both Kit Gilchrist and Batum will very likely not be the main scoring options for the Hornets, so at least Hood shouldn't have a hard time on defense. I think for this matchup it depends on whether or not Hood can get the outside shot to fall. If he can, then I see a lot of good scoring opportunities coming off of screens. Now we move down low and this is where the Hornets have a bit of a problem. Their starting power forward will be Thomas Robinson, who's really only known as a good rebounder. Both his scoring and his defensive abilities leave something to be desired, and so I could see plenty of opportunities for our two players at that position, Scal Lebissier and Bryce Johnson. Lebissier could be dangerous, especially if he gets the mid-range shot to fall and draws Robinson out of the paint, while with Johnson we'll try to bully our way inside in the low post, where we can maybe get Robinson a few quick fouls. That would really put the Hornets into trouble, because the rotation behind Robinson is more or less non-existent. Another interesting matchup down low, this time at the center position, that will be Frank Kaminsky vs Mohamed Bamba. Because just like Robinson, Kaminsky is a pretty poor defender. Bamba's speed and length could provide easy scoring opportunities for him, while at the same time, Kaminsky will not necessarily have an easy time scoring against Bamba. Yes, Kaminsky is a very good post scorer and he also has a decent outside shot, but I think Bamba has the length and mobility to always stay on him. So I'm very interested to see how that matchup plays out, maybe we can get Bamba going on offense, which could then force the Hornets to give a lot of playing time to Dwight Howard, who then once again comes with his own limitations on offense. And now that should do it as a quick intro into the most important matchups this series, I think it's about time we jump into the gameplay part of the episode. So without any further ado, here is game 1, Louisville Legionnaires against the Charlotte Hornets. And once again we have home court advantage and start the series off in Louisville, with both the crowd and the team sporting white for the occasion. And I have to apologize in advance here, after the game when I recorded the highlights 2K hit me with that update message, it still frustrates me that there is absolutely no way of turning that off temporarily, so we'll have to live with it at least for the highlights of this first game. Speaking of which, we started off pretty nicely with a 6-2 run, already with two quick buckets from Mohamed Bamba. 
The Hornets' game plan to start things off was a bit confusing, as their first three shots all went up from the hands of Michael Kidd Gilchrist, who at this point I wouldn't really call the first, the second or even the third scoring option. It then took a while until Charlotte found the rhythm, Kemba Walker then hits a triple over Tyler Eulis who gives a bit too much space, and for the first half of this quarter the game remained fairly close. In the second half of the quarter, though, the Legionnaires stepped on the gas. This block by Rodney Hood here won of five first quarter rejections, and it leads to some beautiful passing and eventually to an easy layup for Mohamed Bamba. And Bamba truly was something special this quarter. Not only did he score the basket, but he also rejected shots left and right, allowing the Legionnaires to quickly build a sizable lead. Josh Richardson did his part on offense, he finished the quarter with nine points, and the lead kept growing. Charlotte actually ended up scoring only two points in the final five minutes of this quarter, and when Mohamed Baba hammered down this filthy dunk over Thomas Robinson, the Legionnaires were already up by 16 points. Up by 16, that is also how we head into the quarter break, with the Legionnaires absolutely dominating on both ends of the court. And Mohamed Bamba's stat line after one quarter, a sight to behold, 13 points, 5 rebounds, a steal and 3 blocks, all of that while missing only a single shot attempt. In quarter number 2 then, the start was a bit slow, until the Hornets hit two consecutive 3-pointers. Kemba Walker hit the first and Nikola Batum the second, however, the Legionnaires were still up by double digits. And when Mohamed Bamba then returned from a quick break on the bench, the first quarter story repeated itself. Once again, Bamba was an absolute menace around the rim, he added another three blocks this quarter, while offensively, he simply wouldn't miss. And so even though the Hornets closed the gap a bit this quarter, going into the halftime break, the Legionnaires still maintain a comfortable double-digit lead. The Hornets' 36% field goal percentage directly influenced by the 9 blocks for the Legionnaires, and 6 of those belong to Mohamed Bamba, who finished the first half already in triple-double proximity, with 23 points, 11 rebounds and 6 rejections. Despite all that, quarter number 3 started off pretty poorly for the Legionnaires. A lapse on defense from Andre Flanders allows Malik Monk to hit a wide-open 3 here, and on the next possession, Frank Kaminsky converts the tough layup despite the foul. He would also convert on the bonus free throw, and all of a sudden, Charlotte had cut down the lead to only 5 points. At this point though, Rodney Hood stepped up and provided some much needed veteran presence. He quickly scored 5 points of his own to get the Legionnaires back up to a double digit lead, and from that point onwards, Louisville was once again on cruise control. Once again, we saw some beautiful baskets from Mohamed Bamba, with Richardson really embracing the role as the passer this game. Bamba would then sit down for the second half of the quarter, but Bryce Johnson was quick to step into his role, and he continued where Bamba left off, scoring at will close to the basket. A true backbreaker then, this momentum play by Josh Richardson late in the quarter, first getting the steal against Jeremy Lamb, then blowing by, and finishing things off with a big dunk despite the foul. He also converted the free throw, and at that point the Legionnaires were up by 20 points. And with that 20-point lead, we would head into the final quarter, where things once again started off a bit worrying. First, the Legionnaires were able to increase the lead up to 25, also thanks to a nice 3-point play from Mitch Dennis here, but then a certain Frank Kaminsky decided the game was not over yet. Kaminsky would score 12 consecutive points for the Hornets this quarter, including back-to-back-to-back 3-pointers. To back to back Kaminsky single-handedly pushed Charlotte on a 12-4 run, at the end of that, however, the Legionnaires still led by 17. Midway through the quarter then, our starting unit returned. Most of them had sat on the bench for more than 10 minutes at this point, and with the first unit back on the court, the Legionnaires were quick to close the lid on this one. Mohamed Bamba once again scored a bit more, Rodney Hood then hit his third three-pointer of the night, and Bryce Johnson got some extra playing time in the fourth, and he rewarded himself with a big play, fouling out Frank Kaminsky here, and at that point, the game was already over. In the end, despite a few hiccups, the Legionnaires win in convincing fashion. The end result, a 24-point victory, 119-97. And player of the game honors undoubtedly belonged to Mohamed Bamba for this game. He wasn't quite able to get the triple-double tonight, but I think that already says a lot. In the end, he still finished the game with a monster stat line with 35 points, 21 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals and 8 rejections. That last number, by the way, tying the career and franchise record. Next to Bamba though, Bryce Johnson's performance deserves a mention as well. Just like Bamba, he was able to get a lot of work done down low. Yes, the shooting numbers were not that spectacular, but Johnson still finished the game with 24 points and 7 rebounds. Our wing players were a bit more quiet tonight. In my opinion, the best performer here tonight was Rodney Hood, who missed only one single shot attempt and finished with 18 points, 5 rebounds and 5 assists. 
Richardson finished with 12, 4 and 5, and Flanders, despite having a rocky start, also managed to get into double digits, finishing the game with 10 points. Tali Ulis then the man who quietly set up basket after basket. He didn't really score a lot tonight, but he handed out 11 assists. For the Hornets, the efforts of Frank Kaminsky probably came a little bit too late. Still, a great stat line from him tonight with 28 points and 16 rebounds. Kemba Walker then not as dangerous as I feared he would be. He only shot 9 of 21 and finished the game with 20 points and 7 assists. Malik Monk hit the occasional shot as well on his way to 16 points, but all in all, it just wasn't enough as the Legionnaires take game 1 at home. After the game, as usual, a quick look around the league, where we can see a few surprises. Out west, the Oklahoma City Thunder beat the first seed Houston Rockets, while the Jazz, who are one game ahead of us, go up 2-0 against the Warriors. Only LeBron and the Cavaliers stay true to the expectations. They win against Brooklyn and now remain the only team that's undefeated in this year's playoffs. And with that, I would say we're ready for Game 2, and as we jump in here, the game plan doesn't really change much. The Hornets made a small adjustment, starting Nikola Batum instead of Michael Kidd Gilchrist, but I don't think that will affect us all that much. Our strategy stays the same, we want to get the ball inside and expose the Hornets' weak interior defense. For the first few minutes, however, that didn't really work out. Neither team really got their offense into rhythm, and after 5 minutes of action, the score was a meager 6-6. Six six. Then Tyler Hewlett started to push the pace a bit, and he was actually playing pretty good defense as well. In total, Ulis scored 9 points this quarter and also got himself 2 steals, and he also ran the offense very nicely, dishing out 5 assists as well. A lot of those went to Mohamed Bamba, who was once again playing excellent basketball this first quarter, and especially on the break, he was able to give Charlotte a lot of trouble. Bamba also expanded his range a bit and actually hit a 3-pointer, and at that point, the Legionnaires were already up by 9. And things would get even worse for Charlotte. Down by 10, with 1.5 minutes left to play in the quarter, Josh Richardson decided it was time to score. He quickly put up 7 points in a row as part of a 9-0 run to end the quarter, and so we head into the first quarter break of this one already with a decisive 17-point advantage. Now in Game 1, the Hornets were actually able to cut into the lead a bit in the second quarter, however, tonight the Legionnaires came prepared. Our second unit continued right where the starters left off, and after a wide-open 3-pointer from Mitch Dennis, Andre Flanders drives to the rim and makes the basket despite the foul. He also sinks the bonus free throw and with that puts the Legionnaires up by 20. Then the starting unit returned midway through the quarter and they went on an absolute annihilation. Over the course of 5 minutes, they went on a 20-6 run. Most of the points came from Scalabissier and once again from Josh Richardson. And this dunk from Richardson here was the exclamation point, not only gameplay-wise but also on the scoreboard, because it gave the Legionnaires a 31-point lead. Now, Charlotte scored a few more points, but the gap remained extra large. As we head into the halftime break, the Legionnaires are already running away with it. They are sporting a comfortable 29-point lead, shooting the ball with ridiculous efficiency, while the Hornets are not even getting one-third of their shots to fall. And at halftime, we already had quite a few impressive stat lines. Not only Richardson with 20 points, but also Tyler Hudis, who had 9 points and 8 assists at the break. And Bamba once again already had the double-double locked down at halftime. He went into the locker room with 11 points and 10 rebounds. Now, the rest of the game is fairly quickly told. Kemba Walker went on a bit of a run in the third, scoring 11 points in that quarter, and even though the Hornets actually won the quarter by 5 points, that didn't really change all that much about the overall situation. Going into the final quarter, the Legionnaires still lead by 24 points, and with 10 minutes left to play in the game, the Hornets gave up and pulled their starters, and their reserves were promptly manhandled by Andre Flanders. Up until this point, Flanders was having a pretty quiet game, but in the fourth quarter, he rose up to become the Legionnaires' top scorer for this one. Flanders scored an insane 20 points in that final quarter. He shot 9 of 10 from the field and was pretty much unguardable. And like I said, he single-handedly destroyed the Hornets bench players. He led the Legionnaires on another big 20-4 run, and that more than sealed the deal for this game, as the Legionnaires win by 46 points, 133-87. At this point, I once again feel like I have to make this clear. I am playing with the same sliders that I've used all season. Sliders that have handed us close games, tough losses, but it just seems like we're matching up perfectly against the Hornets. And after two huge victories in a row here, I have a feeling this could be a very short series. To wrap this game up, a quick look at the stats. Like I said, Andre Flanders led the team in scoring, even though 23 of his 28 points came in the second half. Richardson's performance was the other way around. He scored 20 of his 22 points in the first half and was once again shooting the ball with incredible accuracy. Five more players scored in double figures tonight, including Scalabissier, who barely missed the double-double with 17 points and 9 rebounds, and Mohamed Bamba, who already had the double-double at halftime. He didn't play much more after that and finished the game with 16 points, 11 rebounds and 3 blocks. 
Tally Hewlett is also with the double-double, 11 points and 10 assists. And I already mentioned this earlier, he was doing a fine job on defense, racking up three steals against Campbell Walker, who really wasn't having a good night. Mitch Dennis also had a few opportunities from deep and he sank three of them, allowing him to score 11. And Deontay Davis had a few good moments in the fourth when the game was more or less already over, but eight points in the final quarter were enough to secure the double-double for him as well. Rodney Hood and Bryce Johnson both with only eight points tonight, but not because they had bad performances, they simply didn't have to do as much, and so they let the other guys score. This game was also a feast for Rajan Rondo, who finished the game with a team-high 11 assists. Most of those came in the fourth quarter, where Andrew Flanders really profited from having the playmaker by his side. For Charlotte, the stats unsurprisingly look pretty bad. The top scorer tonight, Kemba Walker with 18, however, shooting only 6 of 15 from the field, and also with 4 turnovers. So, we head back to the overview, and we can see out west the Thunder have taken a 2-0 lead against the Rockets. A bit of a surprise, but who knows, maybe the Rockets will be able to turn things around. In Utah, the Warriors then get the first win of the series. Behind an absolutely insane performance from Steph Curry, he shot 16 of 17 from the field, a perfect 10 of 10 from deep, which I believe has to be some sort of record, and he dropped 46 points on the Jazz, as the Warriors win Game 3 by 18 points. The Cavaliers remain undefeated, going up 2-0 against the Nets, and I would say we're now ready to travel to Charlotte for the next two games, and if things continue to go the way they have, then we might not even play another game in Louisville. Now starting off, the Legionnaires once again quickly took control. The Hornets made only one of their first six shot attempts, while Josh Richardson immediately found into the game. He began the game scorching hot, scoring 16 points in the first quarter and giving the Legionnaires an early lead. However, on their home court, the Hornets would not go down that easily. A very strong Frank Kaminsky took over late in the quarter. After hitting back-to-back -back threes, he finished the quarter with 12 points and 7 rebounds, and he kept the Hornets within striking distance. Going into the first quarter break, the Legionnaires only with a narrow two-point lead. Quarter number two then began with a strong start from Andre Flanders. Maybe fueled by the performance he had last game, Flanders took shot after shot, and he made most of them, leading the Legionnaires on a small 8-2 run. Charlotte would fight back, however, only for a short time, until Scal Lebissier decided to turn up the heat. Behind Lebissier, who scored 10 straight points, the Legionnaires went on a big 15-2 run, and with 3 minutes left to play in the quarter, they once again had a comfortable lead, up by 17 before the halftime break, I assume a familiar feeling. With two and a half minutes left to go, Richardson then once again delivered a statement. The double pump reverse jam passed Thomas Robinson, a thing of beauty and probably pretty demoralizing. Still, with less than two minutes left to play before the halftime break, the Hornets were able to come back one more time. But two men Kaminsky hit back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back threes, and so, despite a strong second quarter from the Legionnaires, both teams head into the locker room separated by only 10 points. Shooting-wise, the Hornets once again still have room to improve, but so far in this game, they are definitely not as hopelessly outplayed as in the previous two. Unfortunately, though, that would change in quarter number three. Coming out of the halftime break, the Legionnaires immediately put their foot down. Behind Josh Richardson and Mohamed Bamba, they went on a big 12-0 run, and what had looked somewhat competitive at halftime had all of a sudden once again turned into the familiar one-sided affair. Still, the Hornets kept fighting, and behind Kemba Walker, they were able to answer with a slightly less impressive 10-2 run. Kemba Walker's 9 points this quarter brought the Hornets back within 12, and after a bit of back and forth, we now go into the final quarter break, with the Legionnaires up by 16 points. Once again, a sizable lead, but contrary to the last game, not unanswerable. In the fourth quarter then, the two teams started off by trading three-pointers. For the Hornets, it was Michael Kidd Gilchrist who hit the first, then Mitch Dennis made two for the Legionnaires in quick succession, before Nicola Batum was able to answer. So far so good, still a 16-point game. Unfortunately for the Hornets though, that wouldn't last, as Tyler Hewlett and Bryce Johnson went on a 9-0 run to put the Legionnaires up by 25. And with less than 7 minutes left to play in the quarter, the Hornets quickly realized they had no chance of winning this one. They then pulled most of their starters, Kemba Walker was allowed to play a few more minutes. I don't really know why, still he scored 10 points this quarter, but all of that came just a tiny bit too late. One small shock for the Legionnaires, Andre Flanders with the rough landing after the jump shot here. He would be able to continue to play, but he definitely tweaked something there. I think we'll learn a bit more after the game. Especially in this fourth quarter, the Legionnaires showed an absolute dominance on the glass. For the game, they out-rebounded Charlotte 66-41, and with 20 offensive rebounds, it's hard not to win a game. So, the final score, once again, a decisive victory for the Legionnaires. They win the first game in Charlotte by 20, and now have a commanding 3-0 series lead. 
After a very strong first quarter, Josh Richardson leads the Legionnaires in scoring with 25 points. In the second half, however, he was a bit more quiet. Andrew Flanders once again provided some valuable production off the bench. His 17 points were a huge reason the Legionnaires were able to keep the lead even with the starters out. Scala Bessier once again put in work down low and finished with 14 points and 9 rebounds. He also added 2 blocks, however, the shooting numbers less than impressive. Rodney Hood also strong on the boards tonight, he finished with 8 rebounds to go along with his 13 points. But if we talk about rebounding, there is one man we have to mention, and that would be Mohamed Bamba who walked off the court with one hell of a double-double. 12 points and 23 rebounds in 30 minutes of action, surprisingly enough only with 2 offensive rebounds. But for stretches, it looked like he grabbed every single miss while he was on the court. Bryce Johnson also added a few boards, finished the game with 12 points and 7 rebounds, while Tyler Eulis remained 1 assist shy of a double-double with 11 points and 9 assists. Mitch Dennis, as usual, a threat from deep. He took 5 three-pointers this game and made 3 of them, therefore finishing with 9 points. Rajan Rondo a bit more quiet than in the last game, however, this time he also put in the work on defense and racked up 3 steals to go along with his 4 points and 6 assists. Deontay Davis then added a smooth 10 rebounds in 19 minutes, but he didn't do much more than that. For the Hornets, Kemba Walker once again did all he could. His stat line with 27 points and 11 assists is definitely nothing to complain about. And Frank Kaminsky, who finished with 18 points and 12 rebounds, also helped keep the Hornets in the game for stretches. However, after that, things quickly drop off. None of the role players really came to play. The shooting numbers were pretty bad for the rest of the team. And if you add to that the Legionnaires' complete dominance on the glass, then it's easy to understand why the Hornets fell short. After the game then, the most important thing, a look at Andre Flanders, and luckily it seems like the injury is nothing serious, just a sprained left ankle that leaves him able to play, however his rating has suffered quite a bit, and I would say if the next game goes like the previous three, then I would rather keep him out. A quick look now at the other semi-finals matchups, Houston finally wins a game against the Thunder in OKC no less, while the Jazz obliterate the Warriors in a 22-point victory, taking a commanding 3-1 lead. The Cavaliers win as well, although only by 2 points. Still, this now puts them one game shy of a potential serious sweep. And that is also the exact same situation that the Legionnaires are in. With one more game in Charlotte, we could take the series in 4 games and complete the sweep. However, unless things go horribly wrong, Andre Flanders will sit this one out, and that might make things a little bit more difficult. The Hornets also with one more adjustment, starting Dwayne Bacon at the small forward, after both Michael Kidd Gilchrist and Nicola Batum didn't really seem to work out. Bacon, however, is mostly an offensive-minded player and not really a good defender, and that led to a very good start for our small forward Rodney Hood. Hood put up 10 points in this first quarter and overall the Legionnaires played very good defense, and so after a few minutes the Legionnaires were once again in control of this one. The only Hornets player who really had an answer was Campbell Walker, but what an answer he had. Walker scored like a madman this first quarter, already hitting three three-pointers and finishing the quarter with 15 points on a scorching hot shooting performance. Nonetheless, our defense was relentless. The Legionnaires forced six first-quarter turnovers, including three on Walker himself, and Rodney Hood was also a key figure on the defensive end, stealing the ball twice from the Hornets, which led to easy points. And despite Campbell Walker's fantastic start, those easy points were once again the reason we had a lead going into the first quarter break. After 12 minutes of action, the Legionnaires lead by four. The second quarter then was a constant back and forth. For us, Rodney Hood continued strong and scored 8 more points this quarter, now already up to 18 at the halftime break. We also got some nice production out of Mohamed Bamba this quarter, who once more finished the first half with a double-double, 11 points and 11 rebounds. For Charlotte then, the role players finally stepped up. They hit quite a few of their three-pointers and got some production out of Nicola Batum, Malik Monk and Thomas Robinson. In the end, Charlotte actually won the quarter by one point, and so we head into the halftime break with the Legionnaires only up by three. After the break then, it was once again the Campbell Walker show. Behind Walker, who scored a ridiculous 17 points this quarter, the Hornets went on a quick 9-2 run, and for the first time in a long while, Charlotte actually had a lead. The Legionnaires did have an answer though, in the form of Scala Bissier. Labissier put up 11 points and 2 big blocks this quarter, and together with Mohamed Bamba he punished the Hornets' interior defense, and the two of them quickly reclaimed the lead for Louisville. What followed was a quick 8-0 run, and capped off by this 3-pointer from Richardson after a beautiful assist from Rondo, the Legionnaires, for the first time in this game, take a double-digit lead. Campbell Walker then finished the quarter with 2 quick triples of his own, still going into the fourth, the Legionnaires have a 10-point advantage. 
However, in the fourth quarter, the game would once again get close. Starting off with a big 14-5 run, the Hornets quickly came within one point. Next to Kemba Walker, both Jeremy Lamb and Malik Monk hit big three-pointers during this run, and so midway through the final quarter, it looks like we're about to have a close finish. So I would say let's jump into that final stretch. With a little less than one and a half minutes left to play, the Legionnaires are up by five, as Josh Richardson fouls Malik Monk and we make a quick substitution. Rodney Hood had lost a bit of his shooting touch and he was also getting tired, and so the Legionnaires sub in Mitch Dennis. Off the inbounds play, then Malik Monk with the quick trigger, a bit too quick in my opinion, and he gets punished for it. The three-pointer misses and we go the other way. The ball goes to Dennis in the corner, but he doesn't have an open shot, so we give it inside to Lebissier. And the Hornets make a fatal mistake, drawing Dennis's defender away to double in the post, which leaves the rookie wide open to deliver the dagger. Less than one minute left to go, Legionnaires up by eight. Now a comeback for the Hornets becomes very, very difficult. Out of the timeout, the ball first goes to Bacon and then once again to Monk, and Monk makes another costly mistake. His entry pass is easily picked off by Le Bessier and the Legionnaires are running. Instead of going for the easy finish, however, we run down the clock. We have the lead and time is definitely on our side. With the shot clock winding down, we then call Le Bessier up for the screen, and Tyler Eulis fearlessly drives to the rim against Kaminsky. Kaminsky does not get his hands on the ball, and with Eulis' layup here, I would say the game is sealed. On the other end then, just six seconds into the Hornets' offense, Kemba Walker gets called for the illegal screen, and that wraps it up as the Hornets pull their starters here. Their reserves now get a few more seconds of action, but in roughly half a minute, the Charlotte Hornets' season will be over. Unfortunately for Charlotte though, we have to put one last shot up, and so the ball once again goes to Lebissier in the post, and once again the Hornets bring the double team from only one pass away, and that leaves Mohamed Bamba wide open for the final basket of the series. One last time then the Hornets bring the ball up court, but soon after that the buzzer sounds, and with that the Louisville Legionnaires have completed the sweep in convincing fashion. They beat the Charlotte Hornets 4-0, winning every single game by double digits, and now rightfully advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. And I have to say, I did not expect that when the Legionnaires made the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. I also think we got extremely lucky with the Hornets here as the opponent. After the first round, I was already preparing for the Sixers, and I think that would have been a much tougher matchup for us. But the Hornets were able to pull off the surprise in round one. However, against the Legionnaires, they didn't really stand the chance. So to wrap it up, one last time, a look at the stats, and the stat line of the night, and also probably the man of the series, Mohamed Bamba, who was only one rebound shy of a 2020 game. He finished with another monster stat line, 23 points, 19 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals and 4 blocks, not a single turnover, and a shooting percentage of 73%. His inside presence was definitely a huge factor throughout this entire series. Scalabissier almost equally important with his work down low. Tonight he helped the Legionnaires go on a big run in the third quarter, and he wraps up the game just shy of a double-double with 22 points, 9 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals and 3 blocks. Rodney Hood had an impressive first half but struggled a bit in the second. His 18-point total at halftime remained unchanged for the rest of the game. Still, that first half was important to keep the Legionnaires up front against a strong Campbell Walker. Mitch Dennis then not only with the dagger late in the fourth quarter, but also with four three-pointers in total. He finished the game with 14 points and really made the most out of the increased minutes he got tonight with Andre Flanders out. With Tyler Eulis, there was some good and some bad. Yes, he almost got himself another double-double with 13 points and 9 assists, but in 32 minutes of action he also racked up 5 turnovers, and I hope that is something he can cut down for the next series. Josh Richardson was once again quiet, but mostly because he could afford to be. Most of our scoring took place inside of the paint, and so Richardson once again embraced the role as a passer, finishing the game with 5 assists to go along with his 11 points. And Andre Flanders, as promised, sat this one out. Yes, there were moments where I thought about bringing him in, but in the end we got it done without him, so he will hopefully be fresh and healthy for the next opponent. One final honorable mention then goes to Kemba Walker. Yes, he had a few problems in this series, but tonight the Hornets can't really fault him for the loss. Walker's 46-point performance was incredible to watch. He did all he could and barely got any rest tonight, but in the end, it just wasn't meant to be. After the game then, some positive news. Andre Flanders fully healed up again, and I have a feeling we'll desperately need him, because our matchup in the Eastern Conference Finals, that will be the Cleveland Cavaliers. Not only did the Cavaliers finish the season with the best record in the league, they have also swept their way through the playoffs so far, and their roster is absolutely stacked. Next to LeBron James, they also still have Isaiah Thomas, Kevin Love and sophomore sensation Luka Doncic on the team. 
Out West then the two underdogs actually advance, OKC beats the first seed Rockets in convincing fashion, and Utah beats Golden State in 6, so Thunder vs Jazz, that will be your Western Conference Finals matchup. And with a tough, tough matchup ahead of us, I think it's time we make the cut in today's episode. Next time we'll then take on the Cavaliers, but the odds are heavily stacked against us, so that is certainly going to be a much harder task than the series against the Hornets. For today though, let's wrap it up right here. As always, if you liked the episode, I would be happy if you could leave a thumbs up, and if you want to support the channel and haven't subscribed already, then you can go ahead and click on the small trophy icon in the middle of the screen to do exactly that. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.